What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, February 6, 2019. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Gary Witta, because it is, in fact, Witta Wednesday. Good morning. My first Witta Wednesday in a while. First of 2019. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about it. Feels like this. It's already February. Feels like this year's zooming by. We're just zooming by. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're this close to Avengers Endgame. You know what I mean? Think about Captain it this way. Marvel, Think about it this way. We have Captain Marvel coming up, right? Yeah. In, it's a stopgap to get there. Captain Marvel's next month. Isn't that nuts? And then Endgame's the month after that. You know what I'm strangely excited about that looks good to me, even though it's been getting mixed reviews? Happy death day to you. No, Alita, Battle Angel. Dude, it I'm looks there good too. to me. me I want to see it. Uh, I, my my predicting... girlfriend's like, this looks like absolute trash. I'm like, you need to calm down and rethink about your opinions, because I think it looks amazing. I yeah. appreciate that they're going all in. Like, it, I like it when movies are like, we have an aesthetic we're going to. It reminds me of Speed Racer a right. lot. What are your thoughts on Speed Racer? To be honest with you, when I saw it by the by the end of it, I found it to be too much on the side of sensory overload. Mm. It was too too much. No such thing. And this definitely looks like it could have that same vibe to it, mm -hmm. even like with a big finale and a kind of big kind of death race type arena kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I like the look. Like when I first saw the trailer, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to look at that character for two hours because it yeah. just looks. But they've improved it. It looks. I don't know. It just looks good to me. It looks like the kind of movie me I want to see. I'm excited for it, I'm, and I'm ex I'm excited that the reviews aren't horrible. They're just right. okay, right? You know, because they could have been horrible yeah. easily. You could and have you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the only opinion that matters is your own. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you yeah, decide yeah, yeah. what you decide. You're right. You're. I thought I was going to say you because uh, your opinion's good. They're, they're predicting this is going to be the first flop of 2019. Oh, I buy that. Yeah. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. When so is, many uh, big names attached yeah, to it. How far like out is Endgame now? Where, when Endgame's is that? in April. In April, April okay. 27th, I think it is. Right around the corner. Ooh, baby. Oh, man. You excited for that one? Oh, I'm so, so excited. But we'll talk about that on the Kind of Funny screencast tomorrow. This is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday right here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Friday. Is today not Thursday? No. no. It's Wednesday. Oh, I'm yeah. here. What day do you think it is? You're right. You're right. Man. Wow, it's moving fast, but it's also moving slow. This whole it is. time thing. In some ways, you know? it is. It's still. Well, you know, you know that under this new KF 4.0 regime, mm -hmm. you start earlier in the morning now. This used to be a lunchtime yeah. gig for me. Now it's in the morning. I know. So I hate it's it. a little bit. You know, if 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 I've seemed a little bit, I haven't had any coffee yet this mm. morning. You know, it's like I'm not necessarily a hundred percent on yet. my game yet. Oh, I get this it, will. Man. I mean, this will get me there. This is its own adrenaline rush. We'll get you there, Gary. Don't shit. worry. This right. is kind of funny games daily. You can watch it live. I just said all that stuff. You know, every morning, 10 a.m. You can also get it on YouTube.com/slash kind of funny games or podcast services around the globe. Just search for kind of funny games. Please like. Please rate five stars. Please put two thumbs up. Whatever the rating system is, we'd appreciate all of the, the high quality ratings. Yeah, and leave comments about how much you like me. Exactly. I enjoy reading those. We need. We need more Gary Wooda in our lives. You can be part of the show. Go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and members at the bronze membership or above get to write in their questions, comments, and concerns. Be a part of the show. Squad up. All of that stuff. Some housekeeping. We are looking for some up and coming kind of funny best friends who are content creators. Submit your picks at kind of funny.com slash up and comer for a chance to to work with us for an entire week. We'll fly you out. We'll put you up, put you on the shows. It's a great opportunity to get your resume up. Um, if you feel like you're qualified, nominate yourself. If you have a friend that you feel is qualified, nominate them or nominate everybody. You know what I mean? Maybe not too many people. There's already been a couple thousand responses. Literally thousand <laughs> Joey responses. Joey is drowning them right now. But hey, it's really cool stuff. So. Drowning I like them. that. I like the idea of you kind of reaching back and yeah. elevating the, the smaller mm -hmm. personalities, streamers that are out there, giving them a leg up. That's great. Yeah, a lot of people out there know way more than us, I'm sure. So, yeah. you know, we got to replace ourselves. We got to plan the future. That's right. Yeah. Mm, the future is now. Um, and then more housekeeping for you. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Tom Bach, TJ Meehan, Joe Breezer, Trevor Starkey, Muhammad Muhammad, and Blackjack. I just love that. I love this. And Blackjack uh, for supporting this show. Today we're brought to you by Brook Linen and Headspace, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have six stories. Today. Oh, Baker's Dozen! You can tell uh, Kevin's excited about being a short day today. He's got a lot of, <laughs> lot of energy. Can't wait full to of beans. go home. I'm going to go sleep. All right, oh, yeah, go ah. take a nap. That's what I would do. Story number one, right up your alley, Mr. Up my alley? <laughs> All right, let's Disney hear it. slash EA update. This comes from Hope Corrigan at IGN. 
Disney currently has no plans to publish video games based on its own intellectual properties. During the company's recent earnings call, uh, chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Bob Iger, stated Disney doesn't want to publish any video games and will instead continue to license its brand to other studios. An example of this is the current deal with EA, which currently has the rights to make games under the Star Wars license. This includes titles like the Battlefront series, the recently canceled open world Star Wars game that was being worked on by EA Vancouver, and the other single player Star Wars game that was also canceled when Visceral Games. That's right. EA has EA has the license to make a lot of canceled games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very exciting. Good for them. Good for them. And uh, every time they cancel a game, I just get more excited about that license. About the about the next one they're gonna cancel. Right. You know, what's, what's gonna be the next game to be canceled? I can't wait for that announcement. I don't. I don't think the next one's gonna get canceled. I believe yeah, that the next not. one's I mean, gonna come out. That respawn game is their is their great great hope at this point, right? Yeah, I'm feeling it's good their about last, it. Last thing they've got left. I'm feeling good about it, and also it's coming this year. That's what for they're saying. sure. We'll see. All right, I'm excited. Uh, let's read a little further. This comes what, the from... the cancellation is coming this year? <laughs> oh, the... Oh! Do you think there's a, a chance it gets canceled? No, not yeah, this no. one. This one's coming Not out. this one. The resp- I, would, I would be absolutely flabbergasted yeah. if they canceled yeah. this one. Just absolutely no way. stunned. No, no way. Not the respawn. Um, one. Then a follow-up news story. This comes from Brian Crescenti at Variety. Disney is still happy with EA. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not read that wrong. Uh, the Walt Disney Company has a good relationship with Electronic Arts and has no interest in returning to video games, something with which it was never able to demonstrate much skill, CEO Bob Iger said at an earnings call on Tuesday. We're good at making movies and television shows and theme parks and cruise ships and the like. It's a lot of things. <laughs> We've just never managed to demonstrate much skill on the publishing side of games, Iger said in response to a question about Disney's potential future involvement in video game development. That right there seems a little weird and dismissive of all of the hundreds of games they've put out in decades yeah. before the, the shutdown of Disney Interactive. Yeah. But hundreds might be a bit much, but you know what it's I mean. A, it's, a strange, it, 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 it's a strange thing as well, isn't it? I mean, Disney, is, I think most people would agree that Disney is obviously a phenomenally successful business enterprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a, 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 a monumentally huge pop culture icon and they make a lot of money it's a company that is very very good at what they do Mm -hmm. and they're very very diversified they're they're great at making movies they're great at making television they're great at making theme parks cruise ships all these different disciplines and skills why not video games why does that elude them what is Mm -hmm. so difficult about that i don't know i mean it is hard but like again we've seen them put out really good games but again that might have that was a long time ago and it was a different time and they have had couple flops or a couple of games that like Disney Infinity just didn't do what they needed it to do. Um, right. And Epic Mickey as well. Um, okay. But you could argue at this point that EA is not that great at it either. <laughs> it, it's definitely not. Uh, but the Walt Disney Company has been shedding its video game development and publishing interest almost as long as it's been in the business of making interactive entertainment. Over the course of decades, Disney has created and purchased studios and publishers only to later shut them down. In 2016, Disney discontinued the highly regarded Disney Infinity franchise and closed down the developer, ending all self-publishing efforts. That effort continued in 2018 with the closing of Club Penguin Island and the sale of Emoji Blitz, um, which was one of the greatest games of all time, featuring a very, very beautiful set of human beings in its commercials. Me and Nick Scarpino. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Uh, coincidentally, Electronic Arts was holding its earnings call at the same time as Disney. During its call, EA confirmed that another Star Wars game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, would be out this year. Iger seemed either unaware of some of the drama surrounding EA's recent handling of the Star Wars brand or unconcerned when an analyst asked him for his thoughts on where video games fit into Disney's business moving forward. Quote, we're obviously mindful of the size of that business, Iger said. Over the years, as you know, we've tried our hand at self-publishing. We've bought companies, we've sold companies, we've bought developers, we've closed developers, and we've found over the years that we haven't been particularly good at the self-publishing side, but we've been great at the licensing side, which obviously doesn't require that much allocation of capital since we're allocating capital in other directions. We've just decided that the best place for us is to be in that space is licensing and not publishing. We've had good relationships with some of those we're licensing to, notably EA and the relationship chip on the Star Wars properties, and we're probably going to stay on that side of the business and put our capital elsewhere. Now, here's the thing. I don't disagree with what they're saying for the most, for 90% of it. I do feel like, theoretically, they would be better in licensing, but I would argue that they're not great at licensing so far with the Star Wars properties. When you look at the Marvel side, I feel like that's such a better example of how to do this. You still need 
uh, a team like Marvel Game Studios to be the the overseers with the plan, with the master plan. You know, you have the MCU movies with Kevin Feige. He's the guy with the the vision of what's going on. There's a ton of different um, hands in the pots making the movies, but he's the guy that's like, this is what's going on. And I feel like we got the same thing uh, with Bill Roseman over it on the Marvel side of the games. They're licensing games out to everybody. Have they had that many great six? I mean, the the, the uh, Spider Man PS4 notwithstanding, which is probably would be considered now the flagship yeah. for Marvel game licenses. What else have they? Re- I mean, like, the Lego games and a bunch of mobile games, but they haven't really. Have there really been like? And I know there is there's stuff in the works, but what else has there really been to say, oh, yeah, they're killing it with the Marvel licensing? Well, I think it's Spider-Man was their first real big push that this team was like, this is what we're, we're working towards. <laughs> right. And like the lineup that these guys have announced includes the upcoming Avengers game, includes um, Ultimate Alliance 3 on Switch. It's like they, they there is a vision, a clear thing of what they're trying to do, not the leftover remnants of the Lego games and the Telltale uh, right. properties and all that stuff. Not that those are bad because the Lego games are, are great. Um, but I think that there's a a very, very clear vision of where they're going. And there's also games that aren't announced yet, you know, that we know that they've hinted at um, in the past. Like, where's the Guardians of the Galaxy game that everybody has been talking about um, up north making? We don't know. So do you think that same vision is lacking on the Star Wars side? I mean, based oh, yeah. on results, it is. seemingly, yes. Yeah, right? I, I definitely, I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. That's like a pretty common thing with EA shutting down multiple games now uh the ones that the gamers want yeah i mean it's a weird thing to i mean far be it from me to i mean i would never second it bob Iger is is a is a brilliant executive who has presided over one of the most successful periods in the history of the Walt disney company so my god far be it from a, a peon like me who once spoke to bob Iger for like two minutes on the star wars rogue one red yeah. carpet and that's as close as i'll ever get to that level of like you know of, of greatness you're so fucking cool but, at the, but at the same but at the, but at the same time it does sound like a weird thing to say we've been very successful on the licensing side after a couple of years of notably mm-hmm. the licensing on Star Wars not having shown uh, shown a great deal of success. Yeah. And again, we, you know, we are just here fucking talking shit. At the end of the day, they're on a, a, finance, a financial call with investors. They need to say they're doing well. They're not right. going to be like, you know what? You're right. Our partnership with EA, it's a bad idea. They, well, having they said need that, to... EA kind of ate shit on their earnings call, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they did. I mean, totally. at, some point you can, yeah, at some point, you can't put lipstick on the pig. you got mm-hmm. to say, yeah, this was a fucking bad year for us, guys. Yeah. I, I can't spin this. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting thing. But then there's the other side that like, all right, so EA has canceled a bunch of uh, 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 Star Wars games, but it also did make a asinine amount of money on the Battlefront games. Right. Maybe not as much as they expected, but those games were still massive successes. Right. So they are, they can still argue that they have made great use of the license to investors. Right. You know, we know. You have we to know remember, investors only care about one metric, which is how much money are you putting in my pocket? Mm-hmm. They, they only care about scandal and quality and all those other things. Um, when it begins to bite them in the in in the wallet where it hurts, right? If if like for example the star the, the loot box controversy on um, Battlefront Two was so bad that it was trickling up to the level of like people like, like shareholders and investors, is this uh, wait is this going to cost us money? Mm-hmm. And then it becomes a concern. Yeah. They don't really care about the underlying issues of quality and things like that. All they care about the the people that the the, the shareholders of Disney. And EA and every other major Amazon, you name it, every other major company involved. Honestly, they would be quite happily if you said, "Hey, look, you can put out shit games that make people unhappy for the rest of your life, but you're gonna make a ton of money." Mm-hmm. They would take that deal. Yeah, they don't care about anything else. All they care about is the bottom line. And they're taking that deal. Um, following up with another news story about EA's call. This comes from Jason Schreier at Kotaku. Uh, a new Plants vs. Zombies and Need for Speed games are coming this later this year. EA said today ahead of its quarterly earnings call. No other details just yet. But it was sure a rough year for the publisher. Q3 was a difficult quarter for Electronic Arts, and we did not perform to our expectations, said CEO Andrew Wilson. And I feel like this is a perfect example of what you're saying, of them just being like, look, here's they games, could, that, could not dress here's games that make money. They're coming. Right. Like, what an unceremonious way to, to announce right. new games and franchises that should be respected, at least on the side of Need for Speed. Plants vs. Zombies, I get, is a, a niche, different type of title. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't have thought as Plants versus. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't see the because I don't know the numbers. But if you had, if you said to me like, what are 
EA's cash cow franchises, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily think of Plants vs. Zombies and Need for Speed, which is, they keep rolling along. But when's the last time like Need for Speed? I mean, maybe they make money, but when's the last time that Need for Speed franchise produced like a game that people were excited about? It's been a very, very long time. But the, the Plants vs. Zombies side is like the Garden Warfare games that they've been right, putting out right. and stuff. I, I feel like these are just two examples of games that aren't their cash cows, but they're consistent. Right. They, it's like they know that they're going to profit on them to right. a certain margin. Right. And I'm sure out. the investors yeah. are like, that's what we needed to hear. Oh, yeah. Need for Speed, I've heard of that. I, I look at the previous Need for Speed games and they made money. Good. Make more of that. Exactly. So, whew, we'll see. Next story. Uh, this is a recap of the Inside Xbox episode that, that went up yesterday. Um, a ton, a ton of cool stuff, actually, in this. Some little more like behind the scenes, industry side stuff, and then some cool forward facing stuff for consumers. Um, there was a new Jump Force trailer. Devora is returning to Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, there's a new shiny sport red Xbox One controller announced. Two division Xbox One bundles announced. There was behind the scenes featurettes on Journey to the Savage Planet and Crackdown 3. And they announced Xbox Game Pass games for February, including Shadow of the Tomb Raider on February 7th. Mm -hmm. that's, um, pretty, that's a pretty recent game. It is. Yeah, since last September. I mean, you know, it's half a year, but that's... Really cool to be seeing these programs that for free games, right? You have to pay for it, but like mm -hmm. once you pay, it's there and you can download it whenever you want for for fairly recent games. Yeah, The Walking Dead, the complete first season on February seventh, Pumped BMX Pro on February seventh, Deblob February fourteenth, Valentine's Day, Crackdown three February fifteenth, also on PC via Play Anywhere, and Batman Return to Arkham February twenty first. Uh, and then the the two bigger stories, I would say, um, Halo Outpost Discovery was announced. Halo Outpost, Outpost Discovery is a touring fan experience for all ages that brings the Halo video game universe to life like never before. This weekend-long event lets you step into Halo's vast and epic world with enthralling themed attractions, interactive in-universe encounters, the latest playable game releases, and so much more. Experience details... Experience details, ticket information, and more are available right now at HaloOutpostDiscovery.com. Uh, they got some dates, July 5th through 7th in Orlando, 19th through 21st in Philadelphia, August 2nd through 4th in Chicago, 16th through 18th in Houston, and August 30th through September 1st in Anaheim. Uh, explore the ring experience. You get up close and personal with a real-life warthog. Battle fellow recruits in an epic laser tag arena. Experience thrilling in-universe encounters with the latest simulation and VR technologies and much, much more. Take advantage of hundreds of game stations to play, compete, and explore the storied Halo game series. Attend one of the things, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Panels, meet the creators, special guests, learn how the Halo universe is made. Cosplay. cosplay live learn, streams learn how to live stream so i mean if you're a halo fan it seems like the sort of thing you'd, you'd want to go to true at the same time this feels like a weird stopgap of them being like we got to keep halo relevant right but we don't have to put something to out do. yeah yeah which i guess is fine it's funny because a couple days ago on the show we were talking about uh nintendo's uh, financial reports and their talks on their um the universal studios uh, expansion that they're doing and all that stuff and just weird Nintendo, opening a Nintendo store in Japan and, and stuff like that. And I was saying how much sense that makes just based on the, the characters and the IP that Nintendo has. This seems different, you know? It's like, I, I don't think Halo has that type of theme park level attraction of this being something that uh, is... is anyone's clamoring for well oh, but, but, like, you, but i guarantee you go to any of these cities on these dates and oh they'll be, it's gonna they'll be, be they'll be full up absolutely so, that's also why they're not opening a theme park and instead doing a road show yeah that makes sense right that's true yeah that's and, true. Uh, just one weekend at a time right so yeah. the, trust me there's enough people to fill I, I guess out. the point that i'm trying to make is with the, the nintendo side of it it's like they're putting out games based on mario currently and they're making a theme park based on him this there's no halo game right now halo infinite we Who haven't heard about yeah. it for, for months. I don't think we're going to hear about it for months. Right. You know, um, like there's there's a chance it doesn't make E3. That would shock me. But there is a chance, um, especially when you add this. Unless like they have that and they plan to demo it at this event. That would be cool. Getting in the hands of more fans out I there. I they did say that, though. Well, they can't say it yet if they haven't talked about Infinite, really. You know, um, we'll see. It does sound cool. The VR stuff sounds cool. It sounds like they're trying to do that same thing that they do at Disneyland with the Star Wars experience, which is really cool where it's, you have VR, but you also are like holding guns and stuff. Like, right. you, like it feels really immersive. So that's cool. But the thing that's most exciting to me is Matt Booty, VP of Game Studios, uh, is introducing Xbox Game Studios. 
At Xbox, we believe when everyone plays, we all win. It's why we're passionate about building a portfolio of games for players across console, PC, and mobile. As we've expanded our focus beyond the console, the Xbox brand has also evolved from its original roots. Today, Xbox is our gaming brand across all devices, no matter how or where you want to play or who you want to play with. In that spirit, I'm pleased to share that we are changing the name of our game development organization from Microsoft Studios to Xbox Game Studios. Xbox Game Studios is made up of 13 distinct game development teams responsible for beloved franchises franchises like Age of Empires, Forza, Gears of War, Halo, and Minecraft. The teams at 343 Industries, The Coalition, Compulsion Games, The Initiative, In Exile Entertainment, Minecraft, Ninja Theory, Obsidian Entertainment, Playground Games, Rare, Turn 10 Studios, Undead Labs, and Undead Labs, and our global publishing group are working hard to deliver incredible ex exclusives, original IP, and all new chapters from your favorite franchises. When's the last time we saw an Age of Empires game? interesting they, mm. they threw it out there like that was the first one on the list i was like damn yeah i guess you yeah you, you own age of empires but when's the last time we saw one of those i think it's alphabetical here is a, oh yeah i guess it uh, is because yeah they would not have put that first well, you for put, any other halo is like second from last <laughs> halo and minecraft which are arguably the two <laughs> biggest things that they own yeah definitely last on the list um this is exciting to me because, again, it's a weird. A name change is it's, exciting it, to you? Because it's weird inside baseball stuff, but this shows me how serious they're taking this, and they've been taking it seriously for a while, but we've never really seen game developers, and definitely not like the big guys, come out and talk about their studios in a way where they want us to know these names, right? They, they want us to know that Microsoft owns Obsidian and Ninja Theory and all that. Like... For, for years on uh, on Beyond, Greg and Colin would talk about all the different studios that, that Sony owns, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why the fan base and the community knows them. Otherwise, they're just like, oh, they're PlayStation games, you know? I feel like for a long time, Xbox has struggled having that type of identity, but I love that they're coming out and they're being the ones with the messaging of saying, hey, people make these games. Like, you, you should be interested in these people. You should be questioning what project is each of these teams working on, you know? And being able to fit together, like, look, okay, if we know these games are announced, we know that X, Y, and Z development teams are working on something else. And right. that, that might come in a different cycle. That's exciting to me. And then focusing on just Xbox as a brand, I think is extremely important because we've seen um, so much shift towards Microsoft in the last... Uh, like I would say after the 360 era that I think they got kind of mixed and muddled in the message. When you combine this news with the Xbox Live being on Switch in whatever way that it is, with seeing Xbox Game Pass and seeing how Xbox has been really delivering on these services, I think they're really gearing up once again for an amazing next generation. And what that could look like, I don't know, but I love that the Xbox brand is what's important there. It's not Microsoft. They're trying to make Xbox games mean something, and they're backing that up with all these talented developers. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we, we, we see a lot of um, conversations out there about like, who's got the better games, who's got the better studios, who's got the better first-party stables. And Sony usually comes out ahead in those conversations. Mm -hmm. Like, But at this point, once you include all the third the third parties, there's not a lot of daylight, and we've said this a million times on this show, between Xbox and PlayStation, 99% is the same stuff. And what makes the difference is the, th the first party exclusives. Mm -hmm. And most people who know what they're talking about will probably tell you that when it comes to first party exclusives, Sony has the edge, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no Spider-Man on, uh, on Xbox. There's no yeah. Gears, oh, sorry, God of War on Xbox. There's Gears. And uh, there's, you have Gears of War. But, I, I, but honestly, when we, God of War mm -hmm. is superior to Gears Absolutely. of War, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Maybe I think this is part of all part of their brand, all part of their brand, and say, hey, look, you know, we do actually have, mm -hmm. we own a lot of brands, we got a lot of cool stuff. But at the end of the day, it's less. I think it's all very nice to do branding exercises and messaging and stuff like that. What it really comes down to is put out the games. Oh yeah, totally. And I mean, I mean, I'm absolutely on that side. But I just think that they're at a loss right now. Like it's just clear they and it's clear by what they're doing, the decisions they're making and what they're deciding to put forward. They don't have a Halo game coming out right now. Right. They have a Halo experience coming out right, right now. Right. That's very telling. They are gearing up gears of war. Uh for a future, right? For next well, gen, I mean, so whatever let's that look looks at it. Like. Age of Empires, like I just said. I don't mm -hmm. remember the last time I saw an Age of Empires game, and I don't know as far as I know, there isn't one on the horizon. Forza, okay, we just had one of those. Mm -hmm. Gears we, of War. Year. Is there a new Gears of War game in the yep. works? Gears okay. five. Gears five. Halo, we know there's one somewhere, probably maybe a year or two years away. And Minecraft is something that just keeps ticking along. Yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like 
I wonder if this, for me, this has kind of backfired a little bit. I, I look at this list and I'm like, really, that's it? Like when when you put together all your all your blockbuster first, when you say, okay, what have you got first party that you own that is completely exclusive to Microsoft? No one else has it. What do you got? And you and and you go, well, okay, Age of Empires, Forza, Gears of War, Halo, and Minecraft. You, for me, I kind of go, and see, but that's I think that that's the that's the obvious stuff. But it's the it's the studios them naming that, and then at the end saying that uh, we look forward to deliver incredible exclusives, original IP, and all new chapters. It's like they're focusing on that original IP, like they are right. teasing the future. It's right. gonna be a while, but right. like what they are saying is like, hey, we know that this is not enough. We're gonna give more. Like, there's a lot more development teams here than there are G- names, names that they yeah, focus yeah, on. So, yeah. so we'll see. I do think it's gonna k- take a couple years, but like, I'm very excited to see the fruits of this labor labor come to fruition. Do you think there's? Do you imagine that sometime before the end of next generation or going into the into the next generation, that we'll see um, the status quo change very much in terms of Xbox playing catch up to PlayStation? I was saying this yesterday on the show. I believe just based on what I presume the next generation is going to look like, that it's going to be the first generation where there's not a clear winner between Xbox and PlayStation. Because I feel like PlayStation might go a more traditional route of what PS5 looks like, whereas Xbox is right now focusing a bit more on the service side and streaming and maybe the play anywhere idea. And I think that somehow both of those could play nice in a way that has never previously shaken out. So I think that it'll be closer than it ever has where there won't be any clear, like decided winner where like last gen we saw 360, this gen we see Yeah, I I had a similar conversation with Greg about the next gen last time I was on the show where he said he feels like that, that that Sony will probably just continue to kind of double down on what they're doing, play it relatively safe, nothing too Mm -hmm. uh, adventurous, let's just keep doing what we're doing because they're in number one, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know, in number one, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but Microsoft knowing that they would love to get that, that that first position back or at least something closer to parity. Because I think right now um, what's killing them and what they hate is that general feeling, that that vibe that's out there in the air supply that when gamers have conversations, you go Xbox or PlayStation, people just go PlayStation. Yeah. That's the number one. That's mm-hmm. the number one. Mm-hmm. And that's what people 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 go to Target. They go to what they don't necessarily know. I gotta get a I gotta get a console for little Johnny this Christmas. What's the number one console? <laughs> PlayStation. Yeah. And that and that's a killer. You you've got to change that narrative. You've got to do something to uh, to re- redress to reset the balance. And so it behooves them more. It's more on the Microsoft side that they, they need to do something radical to catch up. What that looks like, we don't yet know. Mm-hmm. But the conversation I had with Greg was along the lines of who's more, who's more likely in the next generation, the next few years, to make a big move? Microsoft. Oh yeah, they're making them. They're yeah. already in the, in the background, like getting ready. It's very interesting chess we'll that we're see. playing right here. Uh, next news story. This is some rumors for you. Up to 11 unannounced first-party Nintendo Switch games coming in 2019. This comes from Emily Rogers uh, via Iggy at Nintendo Soup. Emily Rogers is a, uh, a, a very storied uh, personality uh, in the Nintendo side of things. And she tends to be correct about her uh, insider information okay. on things. Um, but, however, before I even read the story, she followed up, somebody tweeted about the story, and she tweeted at them saying, please don't overhype this. If you read what I wrote, ex- I explain what I believe some of those announcements are. One of the games is a new Labo kit. Some are smaller eShop digital titles and exper- experimental titles. Some are Wii U ports. People need to read beyond the headlines. So keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> Excuse Bless me. you. Excuse me. Emily Rogers, one of the leakers of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, has revealed something interesting about Nintendo's 2019 software lineup for Nintendo Switch. According to Rogers, there are at least five first-party Switch games launching in 2019 and up to 11 that could be could be could arrive in 2019 out of the 11 eight are most likely 70 percent chance or higher to hit in 2019 while three are maybe 50 percent chance or less to arrive in 2019 out of the 11 games one is a nintendo labo kit one is metroid prime trilogy one is a secret title by retro studios two are eShop exclusive titles and two are mystery wii u ports one of which launched in 2013 the mystery wii u 2013 port most likely would be either pikmin 3 or game and wario um, 
Rogers points out that some games could be pushed back to 2020 for marketing reasons, which wouldn't be a surprise as Nintendo is known for sitting on re-releases and releases to pad their software lineup. Keep in mind, Damon X Machina, Luigi's Mansion 3, Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Yoshi's Crafted World, and the Pokemon 2019 RPG are all scheduled for 2019 at this time and are not included in these 11. Okay, so potentially a very busy year for Nintendo. Yeah, a lot going on. Very cool stuff. Do you um, do you like this um, this uh, trend of of um, my, uh, Nintendo padding their lineup by putting out these uh, these polished up Wii U ports? Yeah, 100%. you like that because I saw a lot of the the the, the Super Mario um, U. Mm-hmm. Deluxe that mm-hmm. just came out for Switch. I saw a lot of uh, negative attention around that. People going like, "Why bother? This wasn't that great. Like this, this wasn't a sixty dollar game." Yeah, a lot of negative attention when it was first announced, but then it sold super well and reviewed super well because it's an amazing game. Like that's the problem that like everybody just kind of is like, "Oh, just give us the new games." It's like, dude, so many amazing games got trapped on the Wii U and were only played and only sold a fraction of the copies. That, right, because they that were limited they by the fact should. that the console was not that successful. Exactly, and like we've seen time and time and time and time and time again, there has not been a flop Wii U port. Every single Wii U port right. so far has sold more on the Switch than it sold total on the, the Wii U, right. which makes sense because of the quality of those there's games. A, and there's a much bigger install base out there for these games. If now. they were porting a bunch of shitty games, that'd be one thing. They're not. These They're porting the right games. Yeah, uh, these are and, their top games. Yep, and we're, we're down to the, the bottom of the barrel. There isn't many more that they can, uh, can port over. We got... Um, what, what did she mention here? Uh, Pikmin 3, right. right? Which I think has a chance. I also think they might just go straight to Pikmin 4 with that. We got New Super... Or not New Super Mario... Uh, Mario 3D World, mm-hmm. which I can't believe they haven't ported yet, and they need to. That right. game's great, not played right. by enough people. Um, we got the Wonderful 101 and the um, Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei game, the yeah. hashtag FE or whatever it was. Yeah, and of course Mario Kart 8. And, well, they're, they're, that's already out. Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, in terms of if, you, if you're just thinking about all the things that they've done. Oh, no, I'm saying the games that they haven't yet. Right. And then we have the, the Zelda Wii U ports. Right. So Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. That's it. Like, we're down to about five games that they haven't ported yet. All the rest of them are here. We're going to see them. <laughs> you know, why wouldn't we? No, actually, when you, you make a good, when you put it that way, I totally see the point. It's like, hey, we had all these great games that were constrained by the fact that the hardware platform that the, they were released on just didn't really take off. So now that we have a, uh, our, su- our successive system, which has taken off and is mm-hmm. super successful, let's give those games a second lease on life. I think that's right. Yeah, and not only a second lease on life, a better lease on life. There's so many hindrances that the Wii U had. Uh, Mario 3D World's a perfect example. That game was so good with four, four players, but that, mean, that meant you needed four Wii U Pro Controllers, and Wii U Pro Controllers sucked. Yeah, they were bad. You know? Now with the Switch, people have these controllers. You can play with the Joy-Cons. It's like there's so many different options, that, and it's yeah. portable. It's just, I want more. I want all of them. We're almost done. Is there anything else from the from the Wii or the Wii U? That you would like to see um, remastered well, for those Switch? five games, just for, the, the ones you mentioned. Those five for the Wii U. The Wii games get a little more difficult because of the motion controls being such a huge factor for them. Metroid Prime Trilogy is one that I would love to have, and I expect that we're going to get that. The Mario Galaxy games are. Really I was going to say for me, it the only ga- things for me, it would be a Galaxy One and Two in that a combined amazing. package. Would that would be, be amazing. amazing. Yeah, I can see it happening. Yeah. Although that's the type of thing that I'll believe it when I see it. I guess Mario Maker is the only other game that... Uh, oh, right, of but course. I don't see them porting it. I see them just making a straight-up sequel. Right. Which uh, That's designed around the function of the Switch. Right. Um, then the last news story of the day. Take two earnings reports. A lot of earnings reports this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, from time of year. Jesse time of year. Wade at IGN. Publisher Take-Two shared their fiscal third quarter report, which ended on December 31st, Wednesday morning, growing substantially in net revenue due to the success of Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 largely exceeded expectations, selling 23 million copies on the retail front worldwide and increasing digital sales revenues. Net revenue for the company grew to $1.249 billion compared to $480 million in the same quarter of, er, of 2017. That's nuts. What a difference one mega hit game makes. Man, virtual currency, add-on content, and in-game purchases increased and made up 24% of the total That's net a, revenue. That seems like a big number as That's well. That's a big old number. That's a, qu- a quarter of their of their revenue comes from the from the buy, selling virtual gold and the add-on stuff. That's a huge market. Thanks in part to Red Dead Redemption 2, NBA 2K19, and NBA 2K18. 
The gifts that keep on giving. Sid Meier's Civilization 6, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Grand Theft Online. Uh, WWE 2K19 and WWE Supercard and Dragon City and Monster Legends. I don't know what Dragon City is. Digital sales heavily grew, making up 48% of total net revenue for the quarter. We're heading towards a digital revolution. I mean, I can't remember the last time I bought a, a boxed game. I just don't do it anymore. Um, and another thing I thought was interesting, NBA 2K19 was noted as the third best-selling game of 2018, with its lifetime sales climbing higher than NBA 2K18. I, why, why is that surprising? That NBA 2K is on an upward trend of each one selling more than the last. Yay. Like I feel like, I feel like they've kind of, yay. They've been kind of stumbling the last couple of years with the microtransactions and stuff, but oh, people okay. keep buying it. So we can bitch and talk a lot of shit and be all angry. I mean, angry it's the only game arms, in town, isn't it? Since since EA since basically live, yeah. uh, since Live died, there's there's no one to uh, compete with them in the basketball space. Insane. And those games are good, right? People like those games. Yeah, but then they just have a lot of weird issues with them of how they're designed. Um, right. But I guess that doesn't affect too many people. Civilization Six on Nintendo Switch also had more sales than were expected. Haloy writes in and says, good morning, Tim and Gary. I'm a long time, first time, and I'm loving what you're doing with 4.0. Keep it up. We will. Earlier this morning, Take-Two Interactive announced its earnings for the last quarter. They generated profits that were about $150 million higher than the same period in the previous year. You'd think this is good, but shortly after this announcement, their stock tumbled 13%. In addition to this, EA stock has had this really tough week, too, despite Apex Legends doing well. I don't really understand markets that well, but in my mind, video games have been growing and doing amazingly well in the past couple of years, or past couple months, but the markets seem to think otherwise. Too long didn't read, do you think skittish investors may have a negative effect on the future of games? I don't know if they, if they are uh, thinking negatively about the future of games. I think all they really care about is, again, how much, how much money is going into my pocket this month? Again, we t- I just talked about this earlier. Money, 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 money. Mm-hmm. And it's the only metric they care about. And when something like Red Dead Redemption comes out, then they get excited. Um, and when microtransactions, things like that, end up a quarter of the... Re- For me, that's what I would point to. Is, look, this is the future, is the long tail of the game. Don't think about, again, you have to handle it right, because otherwise you end up in Battlefront 2 territory, you know, another loot box fiasco. Um, but we're already starting to see. I, I, I noticed I've been following some of the Apex Legends coverage, and it seems like they're obviously a key, the, the, just the initial read of how they're handling the aftermarket economy. And like, obviously, we're giving you the game for free, mm-hmm. but we have to monetize it somehow. Here's how we're going to do it we're going to sell you this, we're going to sell you that, we're going to sell you battle passes. I, 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 I saw there was one. Um, uh, th- one little touch on Apex Legends that I thought was I'm kind of going off the subject here but fuck it uh, <laughs> Gary would have where um, I don't know if you saw this one one touch on Apex Legends where if you if you buy 30 if you buy 29 loot boxes and they're all crap mm-hmm. the 30th is guaranteed to give you something good it's like a, an insurance policy against you constantly rolling the dice and not hmm. getting anything good so they're tr- they're trying to come up with little metrics and little mechanisms that w- that that will uh, promote, I think, a healthier aftermarket microtransaction economy than they've experimented with in the past. And it's, you know, I, I, I've been very, very hard on EA uh, on this show over the over the the, the year that I've been on it. Uh, but I will say that it's hard, right? It's a whole new economy trying to figure out how to how to market and monetize a game beyond just give me your sixty bucks mm-hmm. is difficult. And companies are going to make mistakes, and you don't really know what's going to happen once you. Offer make an offering to a, a million, two million players. D- do you like this? Is this too much? Is that too little? Are we making enough? Are we making too little? We don't know. Um, you you got to find your way. But I, I I get the impression that they are e- companies like EA that the the aftermarket economy, the microtransaction loot box economy, is maturing, and, and that number, that twenty four percent number, is going to go up. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. The microtransaction number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I think that's going to go up, and I think the digital number is going up too. It's just the trends of where we're going with this. Yeah. So um, I don't know if investors are all investors are assholes. Yeah. Investors are always like, "What are you doing? What are you doing for me today? Where's mm-hmm. my money today? I don't care about what you're saying. Do five, two, three, four, five years from now. I want to know where my money is now." And yeah. If this you, happened a couple of weeks ago with uh, with Nintendo when uh, they announced their financials and they uh, revised their. Um, the number that they were forecasting for Switches sold, which was astronomical last year when they're like, we're going to sell an additional 20 million or whatever it was. It's like, really? Like, that's insane. And they came really close. It doesn't look like they're actually going to hit that, but they revised it. And on the call, we're like, hey, 
we're revising it down just a bit, but we're going to hit this number, whatever. And then there's stock dropped. And it's like, man, you guys are obviously not watching what's really going on here. You know what I mean? Because like that thing is selling so well and it's going to hit it a little after uh, they forecasted a year ago. And yeah, maybe they were a little like hot to to do that. But I don't know. Investors, they'll, they'll always bounce back. And it is that in the moment thing. Of, yeah. You hear the bad sure. news. You're like, I'm out. Then you're back in the moment. There's something. For good. sure. Man, the future of games, Gary. It's so far away. If I, I wanted to know what was coming out today, where would I look? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I thought you were going somewhere else with that, but that was a good segue. <laughs> the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yep, I'm not doing the jingle today. Out today, Riot, oh, Civil shit. Unrest on Xbox One. I already know I want to see one. that one. Kevin, can you pull it? I want to. I, I want to riot. Uh, yeah, sure. I, w- I want some civil today. unrest. Riot, civil unrest yeah, on Xbox that is. One and Switch. It could, be, it could it be a new state of emergency? Who knows? State of emergency, I love man. State of the emergency. Ru- did you really? It was. Bad. I mean, I love the idea. It was. It was the best. I love the idea. Blockbuster rental for a weekend <laughs> of all time. <laughs> uh, riot, civil unrest on Xbox One and Switch. <laughs> Access denied on Xbox One. Evil Land Legendary Edition on Switch. Salt and Sanctuary on Xbox One. The Observer on Switch. Thirty Nine Days to Mars on Xbox One. God Monster on PC, Elk Simulator. Oh, wow, on PS4. On PS4, and Pipe Push Paradise on PS4, which is All right, here we go. Nasty. Civil unrest, police and civilians. Whoa. Amazing Riot Simulator. Okay. okay. You got the wiki This was published in, in 2017, this video, so this is not a new game. Maybe it's just new to... The Xbox One and Switch. Mm. Okay, it looks, like it's got, it looks like it's got some old school graphics. Whoa. Okay. I All went right. from being like, this looks like garbage, to this looks pretty damn rad. That looks but like, like a, I mean, that, there's a protest. You got some protesters. You got some, looks like some riot. The riot police are going in to try and break it up. Huh. Rebels must hold position for the next. Okay. This could be interesting. What is this on Xbox One? And Switch. And Switch. Yeah. Well, there you go. All Those right, I'll check that out. Some new dates for you. NES Online on Wednesday, February 13th, Super Mario Brothers 2 and Kirby's Adventure will join the ever-growing list of NES classics. Um, and the remastered version of Assassin's Creed 3 will be out on March 29th for Xbox One, PS4, and PC for $40 on its own or as part of Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass. It includes all the DLC and the very good Vita spinoff, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Deals of the day for you. Uh, these come from Wario64, as always. SanDisk Ultra 400 gigabyte micro SD card. So Holy the crap. one for the Switch uh, is only $80 on Amazon right now. That's a great deal. That is an amazing deal. These things are just dropping in price. And it's uh, amazing. These SD cards, 400 so small. gigs. So small. Teeny tiny little so many, so many video games you can hold on that thing. Uh, 400 gigabytes, $80, 256. That's a great deal. I, I paid that when the Switch came out and I was in the market for a big SD card because I knew I wanted to buy the games digitally and I needed the mm-hmm. storage space. I, I, As memory serves, I paid about that for a card that was about half the price, about half the size, about 200 gigs. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. Definitely. 256 is just $45, 200 is $40, and 128 for $21. You can get Damn, all those on prices. Amazon, the SanDisk Ultra micro SD XC cards. I can remember when like a four megabyte computer cost $2,000, four megabytes. Here we are. And then and now for 80 bucks, you get 400 gigabytes. Man, life. It goes on. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Reader Mail. But first, let me tell you this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily (laughs) is brought to you by Brook Linen. You spend a third of your life in sheets. It's about time for a bedding upgrade. Greg loves his Brook Linen sheets. I do, too. We talk about them all the time, how soft they are, how much sleep we get in them. Brook Linen sheets named the winner of the best online bedding category by Good Housekeeping. Founded in early 2014, these sheets just keep on kicking. Luxury sheets without the luxury markup. Most bedding is marked up as much as 300%. Brooklinen is the fastest growing betting brand in the world. Over 30,000 five star reviews. Sheets don't just feel great, but they look great too. You can mix and match over 20 plus colors and patterns. I don't know why you'd need to do that when blue is uh, many of the options. You just choose your favorite blues, put them together. Uh, my Brooklinen sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on. Now it's time for you to upgrade and say the same thing. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code GAMES at brooklinen.com. Brooklinen is so confident in their products that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code GAMES at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code GAMES. Brooklinen. These really are the best sheets ever. 
And next up, Headspace. Headspace is your guide to health and happiness. In fact, just 10 days of Headspace has been proven to reduce stress and increase happiness. It will teach you the life-changing skills of meditation and mindfulness in just a few minutes a day. Three weeks of Headspace reduced aggression and reactivity to negative feedback by 57%. 10 days of Headspace increased happiness by 5%. Headspace has hundreds of meditation sessions on everything from stress to sleep. There are SOS exercises for meltdown moments and mini meditations for busy days. You'll be guided every step of the way by Headspace co-founder Andy Potokambe, who spent years training as a monk. Guided exercises to help you add a touch of mindfulness to daily activities like cooking, commuting, eating, and more. You can start your journey towards a healthier, happier life by subscribing to Headspace. Sign up now at headspace.com slash games to get a free month trial. Sign up online at headspace.com slash games for a free month trial and start meditating today. Uh, Barrett Courtney, he's been using it. It's been helping him go to sleep. You can kind of set it. There's an app. You can have different uh, noises that kind of help soothe you to, to bed. I saw on the kind of funny Reddit, there was a, a thread of a, a bunch of best friends that have been using this uh, to great effect. So check it out. Headspace.com slash games. Whew. My mouth always gets so dry when I just drink the coffee and then do the ad reads. Yeah. yeah, well, it's a lot in one unbroken spiel. It's a whole spiel. This cold weather as well the rig will dry you up. It's Chappy so lips. cold. It's been cold. So cold. Eric Myers writes in, what's up, dude? And says, what's up, Tim and Gary? I've been playing through Resident Evil 2 and loving it, but I was thinking about something. Do you think it's possible they would update the game to have a mode where it can be played in either first person or a fixed camera angle? And of those two, which do you think is more possible? Thank you for your time. No. I no, don't. I don't think they would do that. I, I don't think it would be doable, would it? The fixed camera angle, I definitely don't think that they would do because I feel like that would just entirely break the game it of would. just how this one's designed. Yeah. First person, I feel like they could do it and they might do it. First person is doable. I don't think the fixed camera angle is. Yeah. I, I don't expect them to do it, but uh, this reminds me kind of of Grand Theft Auto uh, Five when it came out. And then months later, they added the first person mode and that blew my mind. Because like that seemed like a way more difficult thing than it seemed to be. <laughs> that it just like, oh, here's now you can play Grand Theft Auto in first person and it doesn't suck. It was super hard though, from my understanding. Well, first person just makes things hard because you're no, I mean like viewing angle. adding that change. Oh, oh, really? Was incredibly difficult. Yeah, that's just weird that they did it then. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. I don't know who yeah, who would have yeah. been clamoring for that. Because like the angles that like they have to render everything changes. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 I gotta say, I um. Never really played the, the original Resident Evil games that much back in the day when they were when they were popular in the early days of Resident Evil. But we got this new one. My wife and I've been playing. We've been playing. We, we played through and finished the the, the new uh, remake, Resident Evil Two, and kind of got into it. And uh, my wife's now playing through. She did Claire first. Awesome. Play, played Claire through to the end. And is now doing Leon mm-hmm. as a second run. That's how I. And it's it fun. Too. Fun to play. It's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. She plays. And I kind of, I watch. And scream every and, once in a while. And, but I have the walkthrough in case you get stuck. And like, yeah. here's, here's where you're supposed to. Because the game doesn't do a great job of always telling you where you need to. You can get lost easily with other. We refer to a walkthrough several times. Because uh-huh. you, can, you can get. I don't it's know very what you're Metroidvania. You, you can, get, you can yeah. get turned around. It's designed that way. Yeah. I mean, the puzzles themselves are like fairly, you can figure out the puzzles. But like, there's a lot of like, well, where the fuck am I supposed to go now kind of moments that aren't mm-hmm. always. It doesn't, the game doesn't hold your hand a, a tremendous amount. Anyway, my point being. It, it, it made me interested in, but what was the original game like? Like, yeah. this is a remake. Uh-huh. So I found, a, obviously, there's a lot of Resident Evil 2 YouTube videos out yeah. there right now. Very different. And there's a bunch. I found one that was, okay, here's, a, they did a split screen comparison. Mm-hmm. Here's the original game. Here's the scene from the original game. And here's how it was remade. And it was very, very um, different. illustrative. <laughs> it was very enlightening to see how different they were. Because I tell you, that I would that fixed camera angle mm-hmm. is is. Or I, I couldn't play the game that way. Yeah, I wouldn't be able no. to do it. I mean, but back then it's all we had, and like yeah. back then it was like th- that's how graphics looked so good. Right, is they had that the, the pre-rendered backdrop. backgrounds yeah. that could look beautiful and gorgeous, yeah. Yeah. and that's why uh, the remake, um, the original remake, Resident Evil One remake on GameCube, to this day looks amazing because that hardware was good enough to be able to to render character models that didn't look like polygonal trash. Right, um, but the pre-rendered backgrounds were so beautifully rendered yeah. that they still they look modern now. There's something to be said for the fixed camera angle as well in terms of how it um, reflects on gameplay because one of the things they were able to do with the fixed camera angle as you as you moved from like when you moved when you left the screen you weren't exactly sure like how the next screen was going to be set up and oriented until you got to it. Mm-hmm. And what that often meant was 
they could hide zombies from you from you and jump scare you mm-hmm. in ways that are like because you didn't know what the next angle was going to be. Mm-hmm. Some, and, and I can see how you, you would get turned around one minute you're running into the screen now you're running out of it. Especially and, with the, the tank with the controls. The tank controls. Yeah. I would not be able to play the game that yeah. way. But it seemed like it was effective in curating jump scares. Absolutely. But I I could not play that. This the the I, I obviously the number one thing that they did to make the new version modern and new was to give you the you know the the seamless third person experience mm-hmm. rather than just a series of pre-rendered fixed angles that you're moving between. It's so good, man. I I keep thinking about it. I will be shocked if a game beats it for my game of the year this oh, year. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I loved it so much. The entire experience, both times through. I'm just like, I just want more. Give me the DLC. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. I'm looking forward to that DLC. There's like, yeah. we've got like three other yeah. survivors to play through. Yeah. yeah. Well, not survivors, but... Well, three other characters. Characters, yeah. yeah. Very exciting stuff. Um, CN writes in and says, Hi, Tim and Gary. A few months ago, the two of you talked about doing a video where you would show Gary how to play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'd love that. Do you think we might find the time to do it? I'd also love to hear your predictions for the DLC fighters. Thank you for reading and for all your great work. I can't wait to meet the kind of funny team in London. Can't wait to meet you as well. We didn't do it on video, but you we did didn't. give me some tips. Yeah, we talked about it a bit. I yeah. guess my predictions for the, the DLC characters, it's the... the same predictions that everyone's made just because based on the the rumored leaks and stuff but i imagine we're going to get ryu hayabusa from ninja gaiden we're going to get the character from dragon warrior we're going to get um either steve from minecraft or banjo kazooie i think it's going to be steve um then what do you well want? we already know about joker from persona right and then i'm excited about that one i forgot what the fifth one was but Anyways, cool lineup. I'm excited about it. The uh, piranha plant seems like it's a good character. He's kind of fun. Weird. Very vertical movements. Have you played it as much? No, no. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Who are you even playing as? Who are your characters? Um, My main is Rob. Okay. If I've got a, if I've got to fall back on a character, I'll, uh-huh. I'll play Rob because mm-hmm. he's the one whose moves I just know. One of the things that I, that I discovered was... And, you know, you, you'll do this. When I was first playing, I was jumping around characters a lot. Like, let me try this guy. Let me try this guy. Let me try this guy. Trying to find something that you like. That's fine. But if you jump around a lot, you'll never, you'll, you'll become like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Like, yeah, at, some point you've got, at some point, you've got to pick a character and say, mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna go, go in deep in. on this character and I'm going to learn this one. And I wouldn't say I've gone deep or learned very much of anything. But if I like, if I had to play you right now, You'd go I'd Rob. give myself the best chance. I mean, I'm not going to win, but I'd give, my, give myself the best chance. Yeah. I'd go with Rob. Awesome, man. Rob's Who's boy. yours? Um, I'm a jack of all trades. I jump around. Oh, really? I, there's no one. I just. But me, if you had to play a game right now for your life, who are you going to play with? Uh, oh. Come on. My, my thing is, it's like it's not that I feel like I'm best with them. I just feel like uh, I have the best chance of winning with them because their move sets were kind of. There's a lot of like easy things to just beat people with. <laughs> Would be King K. Rule and Corin. Okay. They're just so fucking powerful that it's like if you just get the right amount of hits, you got it. Okay. <laughs> you know, Kinky Rule has this like multiple combos of spikes where you can just get kills for after like 0% damage. It's like if I had a couple of those, your Rob's fucked. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he is. <laughs> it's time to squad up. You can squad up by being a patreon.com slash kind of funny games member at the bronze level or above, just like Amulfo is. Amulfo is on PSN. His name is D-Back Six Nuff. That's D-B-A-C-K, the number six, N-U-F-F. Hello, Tim and Gary. So with the hype around Apex Legends going around, I decided to give it a shot, and I'm really liking it. Haven't really been into Battle Royale games, but Apex has a nice blend of fast-paced action and diversity with each legend. If any kind of funny best friends are up for some shooting, send me a message or friend request. Oh, by the way, I'm also going to dip my toes in Anthem and Division 2. Keep us now great content kind of funny. You guys keep my drives during work fun and informative. Thank you very much. Go squad up with your boy. Just as a, a, I was thinking about this this morning, between Apex Legends and Anthem mm-hmm. and Division 2, it's a busy time. It's not usually this busy this time of year, is it? Yeah. Those are three. Me- I mean, I know Apex Legends came out of, came out of nowhere. Yeah. But even before that, Anthem and Division. I was looking. I was. I, I'm. It wasn't a difficult decision for me because I love the division, so I know which way I'm going to go. Mm. But like, I, I already kind of know that I'm skipping Anthem because I just I'm not going to have the time. It looks so cool. Though. It does look cool, but Division Two is more my cup of tea. Mm. And if I'm going to 
spend I'd rather than divide my time between the two things I'd rather go all in on one mm-hmm. and Anthem I don't know everything I read about the beta and look at plays it, it just kind of I worry that it's going to be another Destiny I really do that it's going to be like eh after a little while like the lore seems kind of fuzzy to me and just something about it just feels kind of I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Division 2 cool. and but uh, between I'm glad someone agrees but between that, I'm just saying, for generally right now, if you're if, if you like shooters mm-hmm. and if you and you like online games, what a time to be alive! Well, d- take Legends, shooters out Anthem, of it, Anthem and and Division Two video games, yeah. right? Add those on top of that, Resident Evil Two and Kingdom Hearts Three, within weeks of each other. Like, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, and it's and it's strange. Like it's almost like October in February. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. All these Gotta big games it. coming in. Gotta love it. Um, now it's time for You're Wrong. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong to keep us honest during the show. Looking through here. Anything good? Nanobiologist said, Gary asked when the last Age of Empires was released. The last one was Age of Empires Definitive Edition, released on February 20th, 2018. Oh. Yeah, but okay, but that was just like a... Like a uh, remaster. A repackage, I guess. Right? Uh, a Metacritic score of 70 out of 100. Um, Albino Yeti says the reason they mentioned Age of Empires is because they're currently working on the fourth game in the series. Okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. Rocks Ball Saul says NBA Live is still around, though not selling as well as 2K. 2K19 has great gameplay, but still has microtransaction problems. Hard to not buy the game while it's when it's still fun. NBA Live still around? I thought they killed it. They did for a while. Then it came back as NBA Elite, and then they killed that. And what now, was the and one then that was so bad back. they had to cancel it at the last? I minute. think that was Elite. Okay. Yeah. That's it. We were fine today. We did good, Gary. We did good. We, we did good. Wrong. We won. We won, won the game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been kind of funny games daily. Tomorrow, Fran Mirabella will be hosting. I will be in that chair. What? co-hosting alongside him. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, And then Friday, Fran will be hosting once again with Belinda Garcia, the return um, of the Blinds. Very exciting stuff for everybody. Gary, this has been a fun one. It always is a fun one. Always is. Always a pleasure to to, uh, host with you, Tim. Love it. Love it. I'll let you get back to your day now. Thank you. Your entire, you have a whole day in front of you now that we have to wake up. I got things to do. I got places to see and people to be. I got got things to do. I love it, Until then, I love you.